Boost sales, smash customer churn, increase engagement. Sounds like marketing wank to me. But what if you could actually do all those things? You'd be up for it, right? It's a highly engaging episode 496 of the award-winning Small Business Big Marketing Show, thanks to your ultimate marketing resources list, available at smallbusinessbigmarketing.com. Well, I say, welcome to a small business marketing show, where successful small business owners share their souls. To take your marketing straight to the lead, now here's your host, Mr. Tim Bowie. And welcome back to your weekly dose of marketing cheekiness. I'm your host, Timbo Reed. You, infinitely more importantly, you are a motivated business owner, ready to crank out some great marketing to build that beautiful business of yours into the empire it absolutely deserves to be. Today's episode is made possible thanks to your ultimate marketing resources list, which contains all the resources myself and past guests use to create great marketing. So I'd suggest bookmarking it, bookmarking it I can say that, over at smallbusinessbigmarketing.com. Hey, big show today. Bonjoro founder Matt Barnett takes us behind the scenes of his amazing customer engagement app. I love it. This week's Monster Prize Draw winner in the last three years has seen growth of at least 20% in an industry averaging negative 0.5%. And he tells us how he's done it. Plus, I'll let you in on next week's guest who's created a system for standing out in any marketplace. And it involves blocks. Hmm. Scratches his head. As per usual, team, there is marketing G-O-L-D dripping from the ceiling over here at Small Business Big Marketing's HQ. So let's get stuck right in. Now, as a business owner or marketer, I'm guessing you love the idea of surprising and delighting your customers, right? I thought so. Doing little things that don't cost you a fortune, but have those precious customers of yours sitting up, paying attention and going, wow, how good are these guys? In that case, you're going to love what Matt Barnett, the founder and self-titled Papa Bear at Bonjoro has to share. Put simply, Bonjoro is an app you can use on your phone or your laptop that enables you to send short personalized videos to an email or phone number. And it includes awesome analytics. So you can see when the recipient has opened it, watched it, shared it. You can even create sales funnels, integrating it with your favorite email system, your favorite CRM software. And basically, Bonjoro is like an awesome marketing tool that has pride of place, actually, in the ultimate marketing resources list that I've created for you. I love it so much. Now, I've broken this chat up into two halves. Part one, Matt shares how the business came to be. And in part two, Matt kindly shares three high converting video sales funnels that you can create for like pretty much immediate results. By the way, you can give Bonjoro a free test run at getbonjoro, that's G-E-T-B-O-N-J-O-R-O.com. And if you buy it, Matt's given me an awesome playbook containing 30 tried and tested ways of using this amazing marketing tool. All you got to do is email me. Uh, actually, you can email Sophia, my assistant, sophia at timreed.com.au, proof of purchase, and we will send that to you. I started off by asking Bonjoro's Papa Bear, how a spur-of-the-moment surfing trip sparked the idea. Okay, so it's not like it was um, a, a to B in one day, but I, I used to surf a lot in the UK. One of the, one of the five people that did. And <laughs> I, think, I think after a session off, off the islands of Scotland, hiding under my board in the hail one February, I thought, enough, and got a one-way ticket to Australia. I was 26. Moved here. Originally, I'm an, uh, an industrial designer, an artist. So I, I, I expected I would follow in those in those fields, but somehow fell into a tech startup. Uh, met another founder. Um, I mean, a lot of the processes of designing products offline or online are the same. Came mm -hmm. in. That product we first launched ultimately failed. But while doing it, we came up with a little sales hack whereby we had this, we had basically a tech, 
a tech kind of driven agency. All our clients were for some reason in back in London and New York and Paris. And so we used to send video messages to every lead that we had that came into our funnel. And the reason was we were asleep when our leads came in and we weren't great at converting them. So I used to take a, a ferry to work in Sydney and I would record myself uh, going past the opera house. And I'd see that John Archer from Ogilvy in London signed up and I'd say, Hey John, this is Matt here. Uh, I saw you sign up and testing out uh, what it is we're doing. As you can see, I'm based in Australia, but I will be in London in six weeks time. Would love to come in and pitch you. Uh, I'll be on this ferry with the wind blowing in my hair. You probably couldn't understand most of what I said, mm -hmm. uh, but I had quite a lot of energy because it was early in the morning. I was in Australia and this- You're, you're excited. A, I was excited. This is the first, the first thing they ever heard from my company was me on this boat blabbing away. And like literally every night, the response rate we got tripled and the kind of responses we got were generally along the lines of, didn't really understand what you said, but it's hilarious. Definitely come in and see us when you're in London. And they just <laughs> loved it. It wasn't the message I was giving them. They just loved the fact I'd taken and stopped and done this. And they were a creative agency. So, you know, you think it would work with them. And we really grew business off this. And as that business kind of started to, to kind of wind up, wind up, the same point, one of those clients asked if they could use this video messaging tool and we let them use it. And we explained mm -hmm. that we just built it in, in the pub and we let them use it. And then one of their clients came, came to them and said, Hey, what's this video thing? Can we use it? And they put, go in touch with us. And so we, we, we let them on board. And then next week, I think 10 people wanted it and it just snowballed from wow. there as a happy accident. It must be a great feeling when you can look you know, a business partner or someone in the eye and, and say, I think we're onto something here. Yeah. And for the, for the team as well, I think when you suddenly come in and you start to see these signups rocket in, when it's something that you've been trying to do for years and then just something small tips it, uh, like it's exciting. It's like a runaway train. What, what was the little small thing, Matt, that did tip it? I mean, you're going, you know, you're saying, you know, one, one week and you've got 10 customers the next week, but was there a kind of, was there a true tipping point where Bonjoro literally, you know, took off beyond belief? Yeah. So it went, it went pretty, pretty quickly. Um, I think so we tried to work out kind of where it was. We got picked up by, I think Basecamp, who's, who's a tech company in the States. Yeah. Some somehow it received a message from somebody in the UK who was trying this. I don't know how we can't figure it out, but I think they used it and then they were like, this is great. They started using it. And then because they're such a well-known brand, lots of people they sent it to would then sign up. And so we had ConvertKit come on board. I think we had Mozilla, like Firefox come on board. And suddenly these tech companies started to use it in the very early days. And it was a very basic product. And that was the seed of of what the company is now. Um, and they, by using it, got it out to a lot of other influential people who picked up and ran with it. So it had this true viral element, but it, it just so happened by chance that it got seeded in a bunch of companies um, who were growing in the tech space in the States. You know, it's um, it almost, it was almost out of your control. I mean, you, it's not as if you'd written a strategy to go, let's get it into the hands of some of these big brands and hopefully they like it and then spread the word. I mean, it happened or organically. Uh, but there is absolutely, don't you think, something to be said for a small business chasing after big business? Yeah, it's, it, exactly. And, and uh, people like the fact that we were obviously quite scrappy and new. <laughs> we were doing this thing and we, you know, we launched with a brand. It's, it's the one thing like, we, are, we are really good at. And they liked the attitude that we had and we talked to all these early customers. And so, yeah, and maybe we'll kind of circle around to this. We, you know, we would send videos to every, every new customer. So we would send one to Basecamp and we'd send one to Firefox and they, and they loved it and they loved us as, as the initial people had done. And that only helped us, that attitude of, you know, building relationships as quickly as we could with as many people as we could. I know there is, there's a lot of business owners listening to this, Matt, who are probably caught up in perfection. You know, um, we hear a lot about this concept of the minimum viable product, which is just get it to market and let the market cut feedback to you and then keep keep sharpening your offer. It's a scary thing, but clearly this is exactly what you did, whether you knew it or not. You, you'd, you'd gone to market with something that was 
pretty rough and ready, I'm guessing. I mean, what Bonjoro looked like back then, it probably didn't even have a brand uh, to what it is now. Vastly different. What do you say to those listeners, those business owners who are waiting for everything to be perfect? Uh, well, there's no such thing as perfect. We're, we're three years in. We're, we're a long way from perfect um, <laughs> on many, many levels. Uh, but look, I mean, and this is like as a creative at heart, like it's something you have to learn if you ever want to go into business because as creatives, we are the worst at this, like by far. Yeah. Like, yeah, the piece of artwork, yeah, the project has to be perfect. And then you realize that the, 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 the top, you know, 10% of perfection is taking as much time as the other 90%. And the only person who realizes is you. And yeah. the, the worst part is, is that you get it out and then you realize that you made a fundamental mistake in how you thought people would use something. And so you invested twice as long to find out the mistake that you would have found with, with half the investment. I mean, which is a better strategy? Well, absolutely. And I, did, I had the opposite experience last night. I went to art class last night. I, I paint once a week and I'm loving yep. it. Uh, it's actually a new thing that I'm doing just to, to exercise that creative part of my brain. And, um, you know, I got to the end of this painting and I just didn't know when to stop. You know, <laughs> it, this painting would have gone, hey, Tim, it's pretty good. You know, stop. And I'm like, oh, no, no, just a little flick of the brush there or just a little, you know, just a little scrape there. It can do your head in. And you're the only one whose head it's doing in. No, nobody else cares. Matt, who, who um, out of interest then, has who is using your product in either a way or from an industry or a niche that you just never expected? So given the fact that we were selling to agencies and that's kind of my space and that I understand, I'd say that 99% of our customers are unexpected um uh -huh. i mean one example i'll give there's a, there's a chap called pat flynn who in the states Listen. is a you know huge influencer in the sb market mm -hmm. this is not a market that we understood and he signed up and we treated him like every other customer which is which is good so we set him videos we engaged with him and then you know thought nothing else of it and then months later he gets up on stage at some event in the states called traction and suddenly we have like hundreds of signups just start pouring in. I mean, watching it live, I was like, what, what is going on here? And, some, and obviously we start talking to these people and they're like, oh, this guy, Pat Flynn is on stage talking about how he uses you. And we're like, who's, who's Pat Flynn? We start kind of looking into the use base, we find this guy and then everyone's like, do you do us how big a deal he is? And we, you know, our response was, we have no idea. And now I look back in hindsight and I'm like, he is a huge deal. Like he's a massive he's deal. Smart yeah. passive income. Tell me, um, so just to call you on that, uh, why didn't you know about him? I mean, this is a guy, I mean, clearly now it's, it's obvious. Um, he is a guy who has massive influence in, in the small business space in America. Um, wh why hadn't you done the work? Because I, I sort of asked this on behalf, I think there's many companies out there who are all rattling on about it. We want to get in front of, you know, SMEs. But for some reason, they don't roll up the sleeves and do the hard work and identify the Pat Flynn's of the world. What, what did you miss? So I think at the time, so we're, we're a bunch of tech heads. So, you know, all the products built here in Australia. And so yeah, the, the people that we know run tech companies. So we know tech. And as a result of our, of our previous business, you know, we know the Ogilvy's uh, uh, and the creative agencies, mostly in Europe uh, and the, uh, yeah, kind of New York. So that was our space and our knowledge base. And then, you know, a huge swathe of, of, of Bonjour's customers now are in this SME space, but it's a space we've had to learn because we were an SME. Like forget the fact we were in tech. You know, the reason we did this in the first place was because we were an SME trying to, get, trying to convert more leads. So we were that company, but we didn't think of ourselves as an SME. We thought ourselves as a tech company, but really it's, it's, the, it's the same thing. You know, it's size. Totally. You, you so, are an SME in, in the tech space. Exactly. And honestly, you, you get blindsided to your industry and to your use case. And you know, the danger there is that you, know, you might build something that is amazing for gyms, but all you understand is consultancy and corporates. And you might never understand, you might never discover the fact that your product is perfect in another niche. And it's like, like it's kind of scary because you, you just think, how do you find this out? How do you find it out quickly? Uh, and we were lucky, like the caveat here is that because we were being sent out to our customers' customers, so the messages go out, people say, what is this? In they come. We very quickly 
probably got representation across a, a, a very, very, very broad, um, I guess, group of group of types of customers. So we had gyms and we had churches and we had SaaS companies and we had SMEs and we had corporates. And very quickly from who was coming in and who was staying with us, we were a- able to analyze those customers and work out where our space was, which wasn't what we expected. It's an awesome question to ask. And I remember a, a, a fellow, a past guest of many years ago, Phil McKenney, who uh, Vice President of Innovation at Hewlett Packard, created a deck of cards called Killer Innovations, which involve killer questions and a killer question, which forces you to look at something in an, from an angle that you would never have considered was um, who is using your product or service in a way that you never intended. And when you mm. find that out, you know, it, it then opens up verticals that you can then go and market to. So it's a, I think it's an awesome question and can only lead to, you know, surprisingly good outcomes. I love that. Um, Matt, you got uh, Bonjoro to a point where you've now got, you're starting to develop a solid foundation of clients. Tell us about the branding, the naming of Bonjoro. Um, it sort of seems self-explanatory given it's a video medium where you're saying hello to people in a very simplistic way. It's a very simplistic description of how you use it. We're going to talk about a number of ways to use it later on. But um, what's with the French kind of thing and what's with the bear branding? You use a, a, a some kind of big brown bear as your brand. Yeah, so so, uh, so as you said, like you're kind of hitting the nail on the head. When you look for brands, we wanted connotations to kind of hello, welcome, good morning, thank you, because um, that's a core part of, of what the product is. Like at the end of the day, it, it's not so much a video platform as a communications platform, and it's used normally with new customers. So hello, buongiorno, buongiorno. You know, the third part to this, which which, which everyone will hit nowadays, is was the dot com available. Uh, so obviously it was, we tried many other things. So you find, yeah, I, I think with brands, I think creating new words is an extremely strong way to start a brand because then you get to build what that word means. Whereas if you use a word that already exists, yes, you're um, anchored to that. So if you start a brand that has connotations to other words, but you then build something behind it, it can be extremely powerful. In terms of the brand and the bear, I think we decided characterization was a very open, friendly way to do this. We were probably instinctively at the time trying to break down the barriers of B2B communications because most of our customers are B2B. Um, And by almost going to one extreme and and, and pushing the characterization and pushing the kind of levity of of the product and the brand, what we found is that we were able to bring, you know, finance and, and mortgage customers a little way along that journey so that they would send videos to clients when they're having a coffee or you know when they're at home with their kids so you start to break down the boundaries and we and we go to one extreme to try and bring our customers along that journey with us some part of the way got it and the fact that you wear bare uh, onesies around the office eh, it's questionable but quite fun <laughs> <laughs> it's part of it's part of hiring everyone who joins the company gets to design their own bare onesie so we so we literally put team in the brand, which, you know, it's, it's great. Uh, are they required to wear that onesie on sort of casual clothes Friday or, uh, like, for- whenever we do, whenever we do team calls with the whole team, somebody's always wearing it because it's somewhere in the world. It's winter. I um, love it. Can't wear them in summer. We're chatting with Bonjoro's Papa Bear, Matt Barnett. Shortly, he'll be sharing three killer sales funnels that you can create using Bonjoro. But first, a quick reminder about the ultimate marketing resources list that I've created just for you. It contains all the software, hardware, and tools myself and past guests use to create marketing that gets results. And there's no bright, shiny objects in it, team. Nothing to take your eye off the end game. Just proven resources that get results. There's a link to my website hosts, which are pretty good because my websites never, ever crash and they load very quickly and Google loves that. A link to the software I use to send mass emails. You'll even find a brilliant bit of free software that I use to make quick explainer videos for my team. I'm adding to it weekly, so I'd encourage you to bookmark your ultimate marketing resources list over at smallbusinessbigmarketing.com. Now, back to Matt for a bit more magic. You're pretty big on building uh, culture, Matt. Uh, you've got you've got t- a team of fifteen across five continents. Um, what is why is culture important, and and how do you describe the Bonjour culture? 
but culture, <clears throat> obviously, you know, like all, all the things about employee retention, et cetera, I, I won't mention, but there's two things that I'll talk to. One here is work is, <laughs> if you run a business, so much of your life, you know, have like 60, 70 hours a week. Um, if you're not enjoying that, is that, if that's not fulfilling you, then you go and do something else, honestly, because it's, it, it is your life and building a culture that you love and the people that you love and something that's fun to do as well as rewarding makes like, it, it just creates a lot more fulfillment for you and for everyone on the team. Um, the other part is look, culture and brand are very closely linked together. So, you know, we build, we build a culture that's around levity. It's around having fun. It is serious. It is data driven. You know, again, we're a tech company at heart, even though you know, we are still an SME, um, that crosses over into how you deal with customers, how people perceive you. So the brand is not just the logo, the culture and your people are really important. So our culture comes through in, in how any of my team talk to customers. Yeah. If one of my, if my CTO talks to a customer, it all comes through and it's a very positive experience for our customers. And it's. Like I think our, our NPS is 74, I think. Like it's incredibly high because of this focus on culture, which which um, comes down to customers at all points of contact. Yeah, and it shone through. I mean, uh, Casey from your Sydney office reached out to me as someone uh, suggesting I should interview you. And just the way he spoke in the email, I thought it was really lovely, very friendly, very human, and and, and a lot of fun. And um, it's famous American speaker i think it might have been tom peters one of those sales guys he said culture eats strategy for breakfast and and i see this more and more in some of the in some of the uh, business owners that i interview where they're just building great cultures and as a result attracting and retaining importantly really really good people yeah and it's like it, you have to work at it the one thing i'll say is that you know we do culture think of it from day one and don't drop the ball because it's quite easy to get into day-to-day -day business and forget about it, but you have to work actively at it to get it to work well. What what is um? Let's talk the let's talk marketing of Bonjoro, Matt. What do you, what are your most effective marketing channels to I guess get trial as a first step? Yeah, so we we have three channels. We've experimented with probably about thirteen to date. Um, three have worked well for us. One of those is product based, so we do have a viral element to the product. So this is more of a product piece. So obviously messages get sent out, people see the messages, they come in and then we do our best to, to convert those over. They're our best converting source. Our second best uh, traffic source is um, what I would call influencers. So mm -hmm. what I mean here is we don't go and pay people to talk about us. We never have done. I, I don't know if we ever will, will do. But I think because our ethos and what we're doing with the product is very much about spending more time and customers doing the right thing. And we have a great product, I think, that backs that up. We have a lot of people who end up talking about us and inviting us to go and talk on shows or to talk on stage. Um, and we tend to talk more about, like, a lot a lot about culture and a lot about, you know, um, automating processes but not relationships. And obviously the product comes off the back of this and that brings in a lot of traffic, people who want to learn how to do this better into the product. Um, mm -hmm. And then the third part is we're starting to do a lot more on, I guess, long form content. So we've done a few pieces where we've done big white papers where we use our user base to go and educate the rest of our user base. So we'll talk to Pat Flynn and get lessons off him. And we, we've probably, we've done one recently called the Video Funnel Playbook where we've gone and got like the 30 most successful ways of using video to grow a business off our, our customer base and then gone and taken that out to to the, the market has been received extremely well. The, these things are, are, are big pieces. You know, we don't do more than one a quarter. Um, they take a lot of time and effort, but we found they've- Explain an example of long form content. So is that something that you create as obviously an ebook or a PDF, or is it or is it a long post on LinkedIn, for example? No, so it tends to be ebooks. Um, mm -hmm. We're taking that a step further now. So with our latest one, we have it hosted online, but now we're actually, pulling it into a complete online piece so that you'll be able to navigate the whole playbook, if you like, online. And then you'll be able to go and use like actionable insights from it by clicking on buttons and they'll get put into in, into the product for you to go and use straight away. So we, we kind of, we said, look, ebooks, ebooks are starting place, but actually building this into a, navig a navigatable thing on our own website. Um, a few companies do this really well and it, seem, it seems to be the next place to go. That's awesome. 
Um, okay, so uh, three channels. I like the fact that you've experimented with 13 channels and kind of honed it down to three. Again, you know, I see too many business owners who get frustrated with marketing and therefore they almost give up and say, well, marketing's a waste of time or it's too confusing or whatever it is. Um, but it's just that they haven't quite yet nailed the channel that is going to give them the highest return. Uh, so I, I love the fact that you, you, you keep trying. Uh, you're listening to the Small Business Big Marketing Show and we're chatting with Bonjoro founder Matt Barnett, who also likes to call himself Papa Bear. <laughs> Are you in the onesie right now, Matt, just out of interest? Uh, I'm not because I'm in Australia. <laughs> it's too warm. Um, I, I, by the way, I love the fact that you, we were talking before we hit record, the fact that this is around the 60th interview you've done on a podcast, which again, I'm biased here, but as a strategy to build a business that's not going to cost you any money, just time, I think it's awesome. And, and to have someone like Casey chasing those interviews for you, powerful stuff. Yeah, it, it, it works really well. And, you, you know, it, it, like anything, honestly, like practice. Practice makes perfect. I'm not yeah. perfect <laughs> by a long way, but you, know, you, you start to find out where it is that you have the knowledge that, that, that is valuable to listeners, which is what this is all about. And so you start to hone down. Um, but like anything, like any marketing strategy, if you do it once or twice, that's not a strategy. That's just a test. Mm. You know, go and do it 50, 40 times. See if it works. Yeah, totally agree. Let's talk about the app. I want to talk. We've had we've had a quite a few video discussions uh, on this show, Matt, from how to you know how to appear in front of camera to various ways of using video. But specifically, um, you got you download Bonjoro onto your smartphone. What next? So there's a there's a desktop um, part to it as well. Yes, uh, which is very important because this is where we do the setup. So just that taking a step back, the way Bonjoro works is it plugs into CRMs and software that you're already using. So if you're using Infusionsoft or ActiveCampaign or Salesforce, you name it, we plug into that. And then what we do off the back of that is at certain points on a customer's journey, uh, we will send you a notification in Bonjoro and say, hey, Christy from um, Red, Red Box Guides have just signed up from San Francisco. She's done X, Y, and Z, but she needs some help here. This is a perfect time to send Christy a personalized video uh, to explain to her next steps to take and see if she needs help. So we'll pop it up. We'll give you the information about Christy, who she is, where she is, what she does. You hit record on the app, or we have a desktop recorder. You do the video. It normally takes 45 seconds. You finish it. The platform then delivers that to Christy um, along with links included to let her take the next steps in the funnel. It tracks all the information behind that. But for you, it's a 45-second piece, and then you're back to work. And, and that's what I love about it. It all lives within the Bonjoro environment. So you're not creating a video in one app or you know somewhere else and then dragging off your desktop into an email or a text. It all lives within there. And what's particularly interesting is your back-end analytics where you can see, you know, has she, has she opened it? To what point did she watch it? How many times has she watched it? Has she shared it? All that kind of stuff, right? So you can, you've got some some numbers to work with. Yeah, exactly. And, and you'll see us over time. We're going to build this out more. So we're starting to look at how we do goals right now. So, so can you track what these messages are doing in terms of conversion and stuff down the line, or in terms of driving testimonials, etc.? Because mm -hmm. again, be, being a tech company, everything we do is data based. Um, if you're doing videos, doing communication. Like you should, you should improve it based on the data. Totally. Yeah. Yep. You're big on high converting video funnels. As you said, you've got this um, 37 page PDF, um, which I will give to anyone who buys Bonjoro from getbonjoro.com. But Matt, um, I'd like to go through, you've got sort of three verticals of funnels, conversion, activation, and growth funnels. Can you give us an example of how you can effectively use Bonjoro uh, in each of those types of funnels. Let's start with conversion. Yeah. So, so conversion, generally speaking, is getting uh, more leads um, and trials to become more customers. So it's generally a second point in the, um, in the sales funnel. Mm -hmm. So examples where we used here, um, I think probably is, uh, look, at, look at tech is a really good example. So you're having a lot of trials sign up, a lot of, a lot of inbound leads that are coming in companies then so generally customer success or or inbound sales teams are then 
sending messages to those clients by video and saying, hey, Julie, saw you signed up. I saw that you've done steps one and two, but haven't done steps three, four, and five. Would you like some help here? And do you have any other questions with the products at this point? Here is a link to go and do step three. And what you're doing there is you're trying to engage with that client. You're trying to potentially start a discussion, but you're trying to drive them to take the next step on the funnel that you know is going to get them to early success and get them to convert to a paying customer. So if, if for instance, Entrepreneur as a CRM, they drive demos. So their call to action is, let's get you on a demo call. You know, Advocately, we'll push setup calls, convert kits, or just the CS team checking in and saying, do you need help with a certain point? Mm-hmm. Love to see the face of the person who receives these videos. Like, yeah. <laughs> I just someone from that company has literally sent me a video mentioning me by name and I, I, suggesting. I was going to say, I, actually, probably the best case that's ever, and it's a weird one, but I think it's quite a cool one, is we, we've been picked up by universities, which are businesses, like, absolutely. Yeah. Um, and we have quite a few bigger universities in the UK that use this for. Uh, when students haven't gotten to their first university in, in the UK, it's, 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 it's a huge kind of sales marketplace and they all pitch in and try and grab the universities to come to their university instead. Uh, and yeah. we have one, we have one stat where they, like one university sent out, I think six, 700 videos. I think 91% of students that watch the video then accepts the place within two days. And they said that, and they told us they, they generated about 5 million pounds of business off the back of this. Wow. That's awesome. So simple, so, so simple and so cheap. But before we talk about uh, an, an example of an activation funnel, Matt, what is it? Um, a video is scary, right? And we've touched on this before and I've given listeners tips on how to overcome this. But what's your view on, you know, I would have thought one of the greatest blockages to people using Bonjuro is the fact that they have to look down the barrel of a camera. What do you say to that? It is obviously something that we need to learn. It is a learned process. Um, I, the reason we, so we obviously picked up in funnels in business and we're generally picked up by customer success and sales focused people because they are less shy and, and what's more that they, they need to get things done. They need to get leads to convert. Um, honestly, the way to get around this is with just getting on with it and doing a lot of practice. Bonjour yeah. by its nature, because we're saying one-to-one videos here, you will find that you will very quickly have sent 50 videos. It's not one or two. <laughs> when you do this. And that's every lead that's coming in. Like you, you, you're not, you don't have time to prepare and look nice. You're literally trying to help somebody here. And you realize very quickly with the responses that you get that no one cares what you look like. People like the stuff that works the best is the, the ones where people are walking down the street or they're in a coffee shop. Yes. And it, honestly, it's, it's not even video. It's just communication. It's no different to having a, a coffee with somebody. You yeah. Like, it, like you're not I afraid totally, of that. Absolutely. Absolutely. Be yourself. Uh, stop waiting for the, you know, the, the right hair day. Don't worry, you know, fellas, if you've got a bit of lippy on your front teeth, you know, like just, <laughs> it is. And, and I think the mindset, Matt, is one of, it's not about you, it's about them. You are there to help them. So, you know, get over yourself if I was to be harsh. Exactly. Yeah. Um, activation funnel, Matt, give us an example of that. So activation, broadly speaking, is when somebody has come in as next step on your funnel normally this is this is post payment so you have your you know you have your paid customer um what you find and this is not to every industry but there's a period when they've come into the company and they need to take some steps or properly understand the product or properly understand your offering um before they will stay with you for the next five years so a bit of a different example here is online courses. So people out there who are selling online courses, there's a, there's a big challenge here where lots of people will sign up and buy the first online course and then they'll spend, you know, like the, like with, within days they're gone and then and they never come in and complete that. Gyms are similar. Gyms, you start to pay for the gym, you never end up going that much. So there's an area here. It's normally about a six week to three month window when you have an opportunity to really make sure that customer is engaged with the service, with the platform, with the offering, with your team. And if you can get into that and you get into success, then they'll stay with you forever. So going back to the course example, uh, we have a chap in Australia called Jax Hopkins, does online piano um, lessons. And what he does is when someone's paid for their first course, 
He leaves a couple of days. If they don't then start engaging with that course and taking the lessons, and you can see this because he tracks it, he then drops a message in personally and says, hey, I'm the owner. Do you need help? I noticed you hadn't quite got started yet. Would you like me to, you know, to give you a push or to have a quick call with you? Mm-hmm. By doing that, he has dropped his refund rate in half because obviously if people get engaged and they respond to him, they're like, actually, I am, I am having problems or, hey, yeah, like I'll get around to it. Thanks for giving me a nudge. Mm-hmm. By getting people to engage with it, it means that you know most people now are staying on board and going on to future courses rather than asking you for refunds because four weeks later, they haven't done any- anything. Matt, a lot of the examples you give are from for online businesses, and I can see how wonderfully effective it can be, but just as effective for the plumber, the chiropractor, the audio studio owner. Yeah, so uh, so, so take gyms and, and chiropractors. We actually have a lot of chiropractors using the system. Um, they use it to make sure people turn up for their first appointment. So again, yeah, someone, yeah. Someone, someone's booked in, some people don't turn up. So they send one the day before saying, here's a reminder, I'm, I'm John, I'll be working on you. Look at me, I'm, I'm lovely and friendly. You know, come, make sure you come in tomorrow. And people are like, oh yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll be there. <laughs> yeah, 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 that's, yeah, that's, yeah. That's activation, you know, and then, and, then, and then it's up to John to deliver excellence of service, but you know, it makes sure they come. Yeah, love it. Uh, an example of a growth funnel, Matt? So growth is at the other end of the customer journey. So this really is, is how do you get customers? How, how do you upsell customers? How do you get them to refer you new business? How do you get them to leave you reviews? Um, I was going to mention uh, an e-commerce example. Mm-hmm. And this is online again. Uh, I'll mention one, one online, one, one offline. It, yeah, if you could. Yeah. So e-commerce um, reviews, online reviews are everything. And this, I mean, and this is true for offline as well. Um, online, yeah. Yeah. So, so once you've delivered your service, um, especially on the first time when you, when you've done a great job and the client is excited. So with e-commerce, this will be two days after delivery, um, with a, with a plumber, it's the day after you've installed their brand new sink in their kitchen and it's all good to go. Um, then you drop a video in at that point and you say, Hey, look, you know, again, Matt, Matt here, just want to make sure that you're happy with X. Just want to make sure that everything's working fine. Want to double check that it's all good and that you're happy with what happened. Um, you know, if you are, that'd be awesome. And what'd be more awesome is if you could leave me a review on Google reviews or on Trustpilot, because this means a huge amount to my business, really helps me grow and it'll take two minutes of your time and it'll be really appreciated. And does on the video- bon- Does Bonjour uh, allow you to include a link to- Exactly. You know, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so in the in the video you had the link to your review site. That's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah, great. I, I picked up. I noticed you'd written a LinkedIn article about three years ago, uh, which I loved. It was all about Thank You Thursdays, and uh, past guest Peter Lorimer spoke a lot about being in gratitude as a business owner, and more of us should mm. be in gratitude in terms of thanking people. So, thank you. You had a, you created a hashtag. Thank you, uh, hashtag Thank You Thursday, and you're encouraging. Uh, everyone to send a number of thank you videos every Thursday or one thank you video every Thursday. Nice idea. Yeah, it's like one. Uh, honestly, just to start with one. one. Or if yeah. not a video, a phone call or an email. I, I think the point here is is we probably don't thank customers enough and yet they are everything to us because we're going after the next customer. So I think an easy way to get into this and, and to work more with, more at this, which is retention, which is which is, which is you know seven times easier to get another dollar through retention than it is from a new customer. Every Thursday, pick a random customer out of your database and call them, email them, send them a video and just say, thanks. Thanks mm-hmm. for everything with no ask, just nothing, just surprise them. And they will be blown away. And the response you get will be unprecedented. And that's, that's how you make advocates and super fans. They will talk about you. Totally agree. Matt, uh, we started this chat uh, talking about surfing. Uh, uh, do you still surf? I do, but as I have a daughter <laughs> now, I am. Um, she's she's only one years old, so she, she's like, like I'm trying, I'm trying, I'm trying to get her in there, but uh, she can't quite stand yet. So, <laughs> oh mate, and uh, what about your your interior? Uh, what what were you? You were a an industrial designer, an artist. How's that part of life going as well? 
has that been put aside as now you're a, I think you called yourself a techie and a business owner. Look, I'm a creative at heart. I don't yeah. do my art as much as I would have liked because just like it, it takes a lot of time to get yeah. into. But building a business is creative. If you're an accountant Absolutely. and you're and you're creative, you're gonna do well. I totally agree with that. And I think and more and more people more and more business owners should recognize that. I mean, creative isn't left to those to, you know, do fancy writing or fancy designs, or we can be creative in whatever endeavor we choose to to undertake. Yeah fully support that what's next for bonjour matt uh, so this year quite a lot of product coming out i guess we're looking at version two of the product so mm -hmm. expanding the capabilities into other areas like screen recording one of the things i mentioned about is is understanding customer journeys more so so we can tell you the right time to talk to customers that that's where we want to get to um with the product if I, in terms of the team growing the team i think i would think all our hires this year will be overseas which brings its own challenges but yeah growing and trying to keep the culture strong as we do that which again is 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 hard to do awesome hey matt barnett well done buddy on creating such a, a, a great brand over a relatively short period of time and i wish you a huge amount of success in the future thanks tim much appreciated well there you go team bonjouros matt barnett their papa bear as he calls himself. Hey, as I mentioned in the intro, you can give Bonjoro a free test run over at getbonjoro, B-O-N-J-O-R-O.com. And if you buy it, Matt's given me an awesome playbook containing 30 tried and tested ways of using this amazing marketing tool. You all you just got to email proof of purchase to Sophia, S-O-F-I-A, at timreed.com.au. Coming up, this week's Monster Prize Draw winner in the last three years has seen growth of at least 20% in an industry averaging negative 0.5%. But right now, thanks to your ultimate marketing resources list, you'll find at smallbusinessbigmarketing.com. Here's what grabbed my attention from that chat with Matt. Attention grabber number one. I love how Matt experiments with a multitude of marketing challenges and has now focused on three that he knows delivers the results he's looking for. I love that. Test, maybe sometimes test and forget, sometimes test and grab it and use it. But the idea of just trying different things until you hone in on those little marketing tactics that actually get you results. I love it. Attention grabber number two. I love the question Matt posed about how do you treat a new customer? It's a very, very good question to ask. And Again, Bonjuro is a great way of helping treat a new customer, giving them a bit of a wow as they enter your business. And there's some great ideas in the playbook uh, about that. Getbonjuro.com. Attention grabber number three. Uh, I love how the marketing team at Bonjuro spend time carving out long form content like ebooks once or twice a year. And that playbook that I'm talking about that you can get when you buy Bonjuro. Uh, is a great example of that. That's what grabbed my attention. I'd love to know what grabbed yours. Let me know. Head over to smallbusinessbigmarketing.com forward slash 496 and let me know. Come on down. It's Timbo's Monster Prize Draw. Yep. You know what that means. It's time for the Monster Prize Draw, a time to reward another motivated listener for taking some serious marketing action because that, my friends, is where the magic is. And today's winner, I love what this guy's done. Today's winner is... Adam Roger of thrivepharmacies.com.au. G'day, Timbo. Thanks for your awesome podcast. My pleasure. It keeps me on my toes and pushes me to be smarter in my marketing. That's why I do it. I own and run a small company of pharmacies run as part of a national franchise. And he says, here's what I've done as a result of listening to your show. Number one, thanks to jo the Josh Nichols interview. <laughs> How often does that come up? I've now implemented a customer experience that I review each quarter with my staff. I drive them crazy, but they love it. I've also, thanks to the Jonathan Baruch episode, implemented a mystery shopper program. Well done. We also focus on being the most helpful in our industry. Get this. Probably the best way this has worked was when I approached several retirement villages. Remember, this, is guy, this guy owns a pharmacy 
around our stores to give a talk on a certain topic, focused on what the audience wanted to know about and not what I wanted to tell them. Big lesson there already. This is counterintuitive, as my instinct was to tell them how awesome we were and why we were better than the opposition. No one cares how awesome you are. Adam, you know that. What's that great saying? Uh, Tell me a joke, don't tell me you're funny. Adam goes on to say, we we predictably get a rush in store the fortnight after the talks with requests for the products I mentioned leading to ongoing sales. No surprises there. More than that, it has built a sense of trust with them as they think we know what we're talking about. (laughs) You probably do, Adam, I'm guessing. So what have the results been? We have had year-on-year revenue growth in the last three years of at least 20% in an industry averaging negative 0.5%. This result is with no marketing other than our catalogue and the ideas that I've implemented from your show. We do next to nothing on social media or online. More than that, it adds purpose to my team's roles. Thanks again for all your help over the years, Timbo. Keep up the great work. Regards, Adam Roger. He's got some pretty fancy initials and letters after his name. B Farm MBA. Wow. Smarter than me, uh, of thrivepharmacies.com.au. Adam, well done, mate. I loved reading your email, and uh, it's pretty impressive stuff. Uh, You have won a Bonjoro license. (laughs) Nice. $75 Flora and Fauna voucher, a Sendal voucher, a Lumber Punks voucher, a box of some boxing gloves from Fitness Enhancement, a full range of Liars non alcoholic spirits. That's valued at over 500 bucks. Some Mr. Lee's Noodles, Jeff Anderson's video marketing course, a $100 voucher to buy some tradies undies. You've got promotion on this show, a back link in the show notes. You, my friend, are a winner. To everyone else, listen, you just got to enter the monster prize draw. I want to hear ideas that you're implementing as a result of listening to this show. So email me, tim at timreid, R-E-I-D, dot com, dot A-U. Share just one idea. If I read it out on air, you win! Holy dooly, that wraps up another episode of the Small Business Big Marketing Show. Episode 496, apparently. Thanks to your ultimate marketing resources list, which you can bookmark over at smallbusinessbigmarketing.com. Big thank you to Charlie and his team at Vala Media for pulling this little show, this little 11-year-old show together. And to Jamie and his team at Studio 822 in downtown Nooseville for making me sound like a rock star. <laughs> I actually normally have a really high voice like this. Jamie, can you put the knob back that turns it down? Thanks, mate. That's much better. Next week, we catch up with another Jamie, Jamie Mustard, the author of a fantastic new book I've just read on the beach over the last couple of weeks called The Iconist, in which he details the secret to having your marketing message stand out in any crowded marketplace. I think you'll enjoy that. It It takes a moment to get your head around, but once the penny drops... I think it'll change the way you do business or promote your business. Hey, don't forget an entire back catalog over at smallbusinessbigmarketing.com. You can also buy my book there. Please let other business owners know about this show. You will be doing them a favor, me a favor, the world a favor. Until next week, I'm Timbo Reid. Thanks for tuning in. May your marketing be the best marketing. Bye for now.